Hello guys, so I was thinking of also branching into movies. I have always been fascinated by Korean and Japanese films and television series. It didn't take that long for me to venture into South Korean films and enter into another world of brilliant excess. And not the bad kind, but the kind that fills you up so full that you fart and burp and roll around on the floor completely sated. Excess in the story, excess in the filming, excess in the narration, excess in the mood, in the characters, in the world building, making everything the biggest and best creation it could be. Sort of like K so I started scratching my head wondering what would be the best Korean film I've watched recently that should start us off on our little adventure. And the film that most exemplifies excess is none other than The Treacherous. This <laughs> is this is one of the most excessively brilliant films I've seen. I'll start off even weirder by saying it's actually not that great a film. It got a 6 out of 10 on IMDb. Most audience scores are below 80. So there's a consensus that it's not groundbreaking or error defining or simply the best, but there is something interesting about the film that catches you off guard. And no, not just the excess, not just the character redemptions, but the fact that it unapologetically revels in its mindset and historical placement without making any excuses for the audience or the characters within. <laughs> the start of this film sets the mood. <laughs> Crazy ass narrator beating of drums with a haunting voice airing out the flaws of our characters, the galloping horses, the creepy faces that we should learn to despise but really won't because he's handsome as hell. And it's barely a couple of minutes before the blood starts dripping and the true meaning of the human experience is brought forward. Because this is a five minute take, I won't go into every detail. Plus, I somehow lost my English translation and I'm going off what I mostly remember. But as lewd and over the top as the show is, and I'm telling you, it's lewd and over the top, it's all about exposing the hubris of our human condition. The things that take our minds off what really matters as well. Excessive power. It's the insane power of a wronged bad king who goes on such an extensive killing spree that he digs up bones of old enemies to burn them to ash and feed to his pigs. And take note of the pigs because he comes back in an insanely clever way. That this king rapes and pillages at will because he's a king and no one will stand against him. That he's going insane and instead of his advisors stepping in to reprimand him, they believe the best way to cool his wildness is getting him a new sort of bride or concubine. And this mad king goes about acquiring every single woman in the kingdom kills their spouses, fathers and lovers at the first sign of rebellion. And what would be the outcome of such a person? Unclear but rolling madly in a between a swamp of pigs covered in blood and even his men repulsed by his mental break. The excess, excessive as it is. In fact, I think I want to start a new drinking game. Take a sip every time I say the word excess. So yeah, the excess of this king is just to show us the human condition of power. Power corrupting or revealing that too much of it can lead to repulsive insanity. <laughs> the treacherous. Next, we have the mastermind, the one who sets this whole thing into motion. He sat back and watched the excess. He enjoyed the excess himself, falling into such great envy of the king that he wanted to be the mad king himself, the one with all the excess. So his scheming led him to search for a woman he could indulge the king with, gain favor, get a higher position in the council, a council that shows the excess of scheming, of conniving for her position, the excess of human hubris, wanting to be the loudest, the most favored, the most loved. But the treacherous one did not know that the very means he devised to undo the king would undo him. He he fell madly in love with this woman and changed his plans to protect her. He let go of his seat, his position, to simply be the man watching a woman dance. The excess here is the excess of human folly. The fact that we feel we have set goals and plans and know the directions of those desires, only to be proven false, only to be proven that our goals, our ideas and even ourselves are greatly lacking. And we are surprised that the things that we once loved we now hate in search of the thing that proved to us that we were false. <laughs> Yuck.
Next is another main character living the life of a commoner. But not just any commoner, but the worst thing a woman could be at that time, a butcher. She gets the opportunity to pay back an evil done against her and her father by killing the king. As the butcher, she is driven by vengeance, the desire to do what is right, and nothing will stand in her way, not even love. A desire that she holds up to the very end until she is rescued by the man who loves her. It also carries with it the notion that any mistakes done even by the king will receive repercussions at some point. Then we see that she goes back to her stage, goes back to her dancing, except that she learns to appreciate her life, that she is in fact valuable. Once thinking of herself as worthless, the fact that this man is willing to take her place as the butcher gives her the sense that she is truly much more valuable than she thought. I think the excess being shared here is that of a set progression. You know the life that succumbs to luck and unlucky moments almost like destiny. From birth to death, it doesn't seem to veer off from the set direction or becoming something else entirely. That's why her presence bears a similarity to the doomed sister of her new lover. It seems therefore that she has a right to say, I will win, I will kill the king, because it seems to be the logical next step of her set progression of her life. And the last excess is that of art. The one thing I really love about this film is the spectacle. And no, I'm not talking about the sex, but the spectacle of the performance. Our best human condition by far is that we can be blown away by a dance, a song, a sonnet. The beauty of a performance can capture us and we're sitting there just blown away. And this movie takes that to a whole other level. This excess is represented first in books that belonged to the men. The beloved studying area being removed for the next excess, the performance, the dance, the preparation, the music. And true to our human condition, we switch in between these two excesses a lot. There was a time that our favorite thing in the world were the stories, the books, the expansion of the mind with new ideas. And after this, in came music, in came dance, in came the musical instruments, allowing those things to take away our stresses and just enjoying the beauty. It's kind of amazing how this excess shows us who we are, particularly in the ending when another narrator takes the stage. This is a wiser narrator, one of the characters having experienced all these excesses and learned that none of them really matter except now, living for the now. Because at the end, the true beauty of the human condition is that, yeah, no matter what excess we indulge in, we can bounce back. Sort of like if anyone is really playing the drinking game, you'll be sober again, I hope. So all the colors, all the sounds, all the mayhem can be quietened down and you find peace again, balance. And I think that's why it ends this way. It's very beautiful. So that's my review of one of the most excessive films I've ever seen that surprisingly shares a lot about the human condition and our excesses. I love that it is historical as well because believe it or not, a lot of these things did happen. I remember stories about old rulers like Caligula and Pompey and the Caesars as well. Um, yeah, I don't recommend watching this film with anyone else in the room. Like I said, it's not that great. In fact, I give it a 7 out of 10. Just because I really appreciate how spectacular it is, how grand the filming and the sound design is insanely good. Thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. If you have been drinking, I am so sorry. I said that word like so many times. Otherwise, guys, thank you so much. And join me as we discover more films. I'll see you next time. Bye.